Hey there, I'm Heather Beadle, and I thought today I would record some of my lectures. So I'm going to start with Module 1, Principles of Seismic Data and Subsurface Imaging, and I'm going to talk about the first lecture in this series that I usually do for my course at the University of Oklahoma. All right, so of course I want to acknowledge there's many, many people that I work with and many people who I've gotten course material from, and so I've got them all listed here. And I use a lot of different textbooks in my lectures, um, from ones by, by Bruce Hart and Chris Liner. There's a very classic one by Alistair Brown that I've used also. And so usually I'm pretty happy if you want to reach out to me um, at the University of Oklahoma, I'm happy to point you to more journal articles or anything that you may want to learn because you know, we should all be perpetual learners. <laughs> all right, so starting with seismic exploration and understanding reflection seismic data, I always like to point out and start with an image. So here we've got a nice um, image. It's from New Zealand. So thanks to New Zealand for, for sharing their seismic data. Um, and what we can see here is a lot of different geometric patterns, different amplitudes and frequency changes. And so before just going in and interpreting and saying, I see sediments, I see a volcano, um, you know, you want to observe the seismic data. And so that's what my classes are all about, trying to find those patterns um, and then interpret them. And so I'll be talking about that. And so when we get into seismic reflection data interpretation, one of the things we want to do is understand first how are seismic waves um, how are they how are they generated what are they reflecting what is it about the earth's properties that they're they're sensitive to um, other things that are really important are understanding the limits of seismic resolution so what can we see and what can't we see i'll talk a little bit in later lectures about how acquisition and processing parameters can affect the seismic image just very briefly both of these can be semester long courses <laughs> Um, and I'm more on the interpretation side of things is where my passion is. I'll also talk about ways in which we can display the data, um, different ways we can analyze it. So a lot of advanced techniques that are kind of common now in industry um, and for researchers to use. And then um, I'll also talk about how we can calibrate seismic data to other types of data from well control to um, production data. Um, just to, to understand and reduce the uncertainty in our interpretation. Okay, so there's a lot of different purposes for collecting seismic data. Um, the first one is to define the structure that we see in the subsurface. So these may be faults, they may be folds. Um, also, maybe you're more interested in stratigraphy. So uh, looking at where you have depositional, you know, uh, different, <laughs> different lithologies and different depositional settings. Um, maybe you're interested in this for uh, hydrocarbons or the energy transition, and you wonder, want to understand where your reservoir rocks are. What, what is the, the lithology or the feature that's trapping those fluids in place? And then finally, we also can use seismic data to um, characterize, help us in characterizing the physical rock properties. So we can use it to help understand porosity variations, uh, fluid, lithology, pressure variations in the subsurface. So this is an example of some deep crustal structures. Um, you know, we could see here, yeah, this is the, the deep crust. We could see large scale reflections, and this is a common way to look at seismic data. We can also look at higher frequencies, and so these would be chirp or boomer data, which image just the shallowest part of the Earth's crust. So that's another type of seismic reflection data. Um, other ways we use seismic data is to reconstruct sedimentary and tectonic history of a region. And so you can see that in this example for this image, where you can integrate your seismic observations with other geologic principles and data sources to understand exactly what's going on. So we've got a nice image here um, where we can see reflections, we can see faults that have been interpreted in the basement. And then we could also use seismic data for reservoir characterization. So this is some work my student did um, at the University of Oklahoma, where he's trying to understand um, different properties of the subsurface to use them for hydrogen exploration, hydrogen, hydrocarbon exploration and production. And so one of the ways, if we want to be a really effective seismic interpreter, you want to first observe the seismic and then describe it. And I find that this is a really good way to reduce any bias you may have going into an area. 
And so I'll talk about bias throughout my different lectures as I record them. Um, but describing the data really allows you to slow down and think about what you're seeing. Um, and also by describing it, you can also kind of consider different interpretational possibilities. So not just the one that first comes to mind, but all the different variations. And so this is an example of a chart that I have my students and researchers make, where we first think about what are the different elements we'll see in seismic data. Um, we think about the uh, geologic analog <laughs> for that. Um, like in this case, we've got a cartoon of that analog. We've also got um, a description of what we would expect geologically, the return, the internal reflections to look like, the external shape, what might the amplitude look like. And then in here, she's even put in some examples of what the seismic looks like in a vertical slice, so kind of like an outcrop <laughs> kind of slice, um, as well as a time slice. And then one of the things I'll talk about later on is seismic attributes, which are ways that we apply pretty much math um, to the seismic data to help bring out different patterns that then we can use our interpreter knowledge and you know our eyes to, to uh, improve our interpretation with. And so one of the things with seismic data, I always like to remind um, folks in the beginning of a class or a lecture is that we always wanna keep in mind uh, the basic geologic principles that we've always known. <laughs> so that's principle of uniformitarianism, um, the principle of original horizontality, uh, principle of superposition, and the principle of cross-cutting relationships. And so these are ones you always want to keep in mind as you're interpreting, that you make sure your interpretation doesn't violate any of these. I mentioned seismic limitations. So there are things we can't solve with seismic data. There's a whole list, but I'm, I'm keeping it simple. Um, so one of the things I'll talk about later on is that what we're seeing are just reflections at an interface from the raw data. So we don't actually know what the lithology is. What we know are the difference in um, the relative uh, density and velocity. Um, so if we get information from cores or well logs, we can kind of narrow that down a little bit. We also don't know the absolute ages of any of the deposits um, or how much may be missing from erosional episodes. So if we have fossils or ash beds that we can date from cores, then that, that helps us narrow down our seismic interpretation more. Um, in this case, we don't even know the origin of this U-shaped erosional surface that I'm showing on the, the right-hand side. Um, because we're just looking at it in 2D. So, you know, if we really want to get an idea of, of the shape and what's going on, we have to look at things in three dimension too. Um, and then we also don't know the thickness of these different kind of successions of reflectors and depositional packages because seismic data is recorded initially only in time. So we need a velocity um, to, in order to relate it and recalculate it back to, to depth to actually know the thickness. What's really important um, that I encourage people to think about is the modern analogs. And so this is a great tool with both interpretation and then also with communicating what you're seeing in seismic data. So many of us, we've uh, perhaps worked in groups with engineers. Um, maybe our manager isn't a geologist. And so when you can show them these modern analogs, it really helps them kind of understand what you're seeing in the seismic data um, so, so I like to show this example just to point out like how well those modern analogs help. So you can see in this case, we've got some seismic amplitudes on the top and then a cartoon sketch. These are great ways to communicate what you see in seismic data. And then um, air photos, uh, you know, that, that also show the, the modern analog below. And so it really, you know, I don't know, I just find these so, so, so useful for people to show when they're interpreting seismic data. And here's another example of trying to clearly communicate those results. So now we've got some of the seismic attributes. We've got a um, cartoon on the upper left. We also have kind of like a 3D visualization of this channel that the authors of the study are trying to show, and then a, a cartoon of what they see, as well as annotations pointing out the different features that they see without obscuring any of the, the raw data so that people can look at it and say, okay, I see what you mean by meander scroll. I, I definitely see that in your data. So it's great for communication. 
And then with seismic data, one of the other things I want to mention in this kind of intro lecture is that you always want to integrate your results um, with as many other data types that you can get your hands on. So in this case, we've got some well logs, um, we've got some synthetic seismic, we're integrating with, with a lot of other information. Um, if you have gravity data, if you have outcrops, um, any type of measurements, that can all help reduce the uncertainty in your seismic interpretation. And so one of the last thoughts for this mini lecture is just to think about what the purpose of your seismic interpretation is. And this is something that I'm always trying to tell students. Um, you know, sometimes we want to look and interpret across a basin. Sometimes we're looking at just a small little fault block. Um, you know, if, if we're looking at a particular reservoir and we're not trying to understand the whole system, we can zoom in and we can do detailed analysis. We can choose the tools that we want to use for our specific purpose. Um, and then also thinking about like, what are the final products that you need for the science you're doing? So it's not just about jumping into a seismic interpretation package and mapping every fault and every horizon if you don't need to, or calculating every seismic attribute or running AVO and four types of inversion, <laughs> um, you know, and, and everything that, that you can do. Like think about specifically, what are you trying to achieve with your seismic interpretation? All right, that wraps up the first lecture. Uh, thanks for listening.